Hello and welcome to another episode of the Toasted Tale podcast. My name is Jim Lillywhite Bewley, and thank you for joining me today for another instalment in the Capturing series. This is a show where we take a look at an image, a reel, or a piece of artwork that has captured a sliver of the human experience. Today we're looking at capturing appreciation. More specifically, the joy you can get when your work brings joy to others and they show their appreciation in kind. A few days ago, I was lucky enough to stumble upon a video. It was so random that I was even thinking of making a whole new genre of Toasted Tail podcast called The Stumble Upon Show. But it was from a recording, someone in the crowd, of a gig by a man named Mike Shinoda. Now, some of you may know who he is. He was a band member of Linkin Park. And they have been among one of the best-selling bands of the 21st century, and I've sold something like over 100 million records worldwide, which is incredible. But the important part of the video that I stumbled upon, if you will, was it was a show with just Mike on stage, and he started playing some very famous chords. Now, I'm going to put a link to this video and also other related videos to what I'm going to talk about in the podcast description, and I'd highly recommend you going having a watch of these. But what effectively happened was he was playing the opening chords of a song called Numb, which arguably is one of their most famous songs, and for me personally, I can kind of trace my interest and love of music to that song. It's almost like there's a a watershed moment where beforehand there was music I could remember, but it was almost in in like low definition, like black and white sound. And I remember once seeing, I think it was the trailer for the film Miami Vice, and it may have been a remixed version of Numb, the one with Jay-Z encore, but it had the same opening chords. And it just, I realised at that moment I needed to find out what that song was, and then... I don't know how old I was specifically at this point, but I don't think there was a Shazam or Soundhound app to find out what song I was listening to just by its recording alone. But as soon as I could get onto a computer, I had to do some good old-fashioned investigating and found out that it was Linkin Park Numb. And... It was probably around the same time that I got my first music player that I could plug in my headphones and then go into this world of music. And so my love of of different songs was kind of cemented in its place there. I was on a path of of music, of following music from then. What was different about this video that I saw was it wasn't just Mike playing the song himself, singing all the lyrics, but it was different in that he played the piano and the audience sang most of the song. In the original recording, he shared the singing responsibilities. He would do a bit of the song and then it would go to the other singer in the group, Chester Bennington, who would then go ahead and sing the rest. So Mike would sing his verses and he had a more smooth, velvety voice, It came with passion, as was most of Linkin Park's songs, but it was smoother than the chorus and other verses that Chester would sing in this song, and he had his famous angry, almost screamo voice that on one hand sounded so beautiful, but also so packed with emotion. So in this video, you had Mike Shinoda singing his verses, and then the audience would sing the lyrics by him. And honestly, you'll see if you watch the video that this kind of blurs midway through and near the end where 
the audience is singing pretty much everything with only the slight input from Mike on the stage. And it's really special to see. And so you had this amazing cacophony of thousands of fans in this small arena singing their hearts out, the lyrics to this famous song. Now, Chester isn't there anymore to sing his lyrics. As in July 2017, he unfortunately passed away. And so there was this extra dimension to the environment and the video that I was able to see. These die-hard fans, thousands packed into this small arena, singing their hearts out to the song that connects to them so dearly. And while I was watching it, I was taken aback by the, the face of Mike. The emotions that you could see running through his face. He looked like he'd been touched by everyone in the audience. Like they were sharing a moment. It was a look of true appreciation from both sides about the piece of work they were all singing together. And it got me thinking, I, I never expected to, to love a video so much like this, where it wasn't the band you were paying to see that was singing, but it was this communal experience. And it struck me that this is possibly one of the greatest acts of appreciation that a fan base can do for anyone, taking the material they poured their heart and soul into in some cases, and singing it back passionately, oh, that feeling must be so intense and amazing. And so with things like this, I fell down a bit of a rabbit hole, and very helpfully underneath this video in the comments of the thread I was looking at, there was a link to many more Times like this where perhaps a, a band or a, a duet or a solo artist was on stage, started a song, then the audience had just picked up the baton and ran with it. And within the faces of those artists, you always see something quite similar, a sparkle to their eyes, a, a surprise, a joyful look. A feeling of being seen, appreciated, liked, and a connection between the audience and the band. There is a proverb that says that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. And if that's the case, then imitating your favourite song in the presence of the band who wrote it, practised it, and bled effectively into it, is one hell of a way of showing your appreciation. I would highly recommend watching all of the videos that I link down below in the podcast description. They had me feeling really joyful watching them, and I hope that you can feel the same way. In terms of the underlying story that I usually try to find on this show, is less a in-your-face, here's a timeline of something going on, is more of a focusing on the connection that we as human beings have with other individuals. And the art, the products we use, the creative things we love, are sometimes the things that connect us the most. They are conduits to find and create interaction between people all around the world. There's a network around us all that binds us. And when I listen to the video of Mike Shinoda playing Numb, it brought me back to some of my earliest musical memories. And it made me realise that there were, well, with that song particularly, probably hundreds of thousands, but in the video specifically, thousands of people around my age and older who had a similar experience as well, and left me feeling comforted, joyful, and full of appreciation. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of the Toasted Tale podcast. I really wanted to share this like subgenre of music video with you all today. 
Some of you may have seen similar things before, but for me it was a new angle, if you will, to view music and the connection we all have with artists and fans. If you've got any people in your life who do creative works, who put themselves out there in any kind of brave or exciting way, then make sure that you let them know that they are appreciated. Even if what they're doing is still in the building phase and they are not the polished package, whatever they do, show that you support and appreciate them. It's the little kind moments there that make all the difference in the end. Hey guys, isn't monetization fun? We all need a bit of money here and there to live our lives. Now, it takes me a lot of time and I put a lot of energy into making the Toasted Tail podcast, so I'm trying to explore ways to monetize it. And that is why, like most other content creators out there, I have created a Patreon. Those of you who are kind enough to support me on there will have access to all Toasted Tail podcast episodes ad-free forever, and also get access to new episodes one week early, as well as for our top tier Patreon supporters a shout out of your name at the end of each episode, and also access to any exclusive content I produce. To any future Patreons listening out there, I salute you, and let's enjoy this ride a little longer. The link to my Patreon will be down below. Once again, by listening to the show, you earn my greatest appreciation anyway. But there we are. The link to my Patreon will be down below, with all the other links and information. Thank you so much again for listening to today's episode of the Toasted Tail podcast. My name is Jim Lillywhite Bewley, and I look forward to speaking to you all again soon for another Toasted Tail by the Fireside.